If you're a local mountain biking club and you've managed to secure the name Team Dirt before anyone else claimed it, that's a pretty good sign that you're way ahead of the curve on this whole winning at life thing. Heck, the builders at Alsea Falls even managed to secure TeamDirt.org as their website. So on top of obviously having some awesome PR talent, Team Dirt has demonstrated superlative trail building talent on the Alsea Falls trail system. Located in the coast range west of, and roughly equally distant from both Eugene and Corvallis, Alsea Falls represents the best riding I've had so far in the Oregon coast range. Unlike the somewhat compromised experiences available to Portland residents in the northwestern part of the coast range, Alsea brings to the central coast range a legitimate, respectful, and genuinely fun riding experience. I liked this place. Google has no trouble finding this place, just be sure to download the area to maps if you want to find your way back out, cause there's no cell phone service at the trailhead. If you get into trouble, just drive back the way you came until you have cell phone coverage again. There are two ways to get to the top of this trail system. You can ride up the single track, as most of it is multi-user and or two-way, or you can ride up the road, which is steeper but also faster. Not knowing what this place is like, I rode up the road, running into a couple of locals at the top who thought I was kind of crazy for having ridden up the road, but whatever. Most of the road climb is paved. It's relatively steep in some sections, but then flattens out for significant portions. It's nowhere near as steep and sustained as other road climbs in the area, such as Reardon Hill at Post Canyon. It's most comparable to like Sandy Ridge, but with a few steeper hills and many more flatter sections and gravel at the top. The trails that are open here are well documented on most mapping apps, so Download your favorite to your phone and know that you'll be able to effectively find your way around here. There were a few signs with electrical tape covering arrows that were pointing to undocumented trails, but since I've never ridden here, I figured it probably wasn't a good idea to go ride an as yet undocumented trail named Misery Whip, just in case the naming scheme was at all consistent with the experience of riding that trail. Maybe next time. Anyhow, there's ongoing trail building here, so I think it's safe to say that there's plenty more goodness to come. All the trails documented so far are green and blue level trails, and based on my ride here, I would say that this is a very accurate assessment of the challenge level of this system so far. After following trail forks up to the top, I ended up at the beginning of a trail called Whistlepunk. Whistlepunk starts out fun and doesn't let up on the fun until it ends. It's mostly rollers, step down, and lots of armored sections with countless jibbing opportunities in all directions. This is another of those trails where you need a little practice in the bike park to know how to keep your speed up. This, like everything else here, was expertly built. It's fun for all levels of rider, meaning that all features are rideable by an intermediate biker. They may not enjoy it, but they'll learn from the experience. The woods here are thick young stands of hemlock interspersed with alder trees. This forest is definitely second growth, kind of like everything else around here, but it's sure pretty nonetheless. It's a typical Pacific Northwest riding experience. Lots of trees, ferns, needles, and like no exposures. Almost no views at all, except for like there are some gaps through the trees if you ride up the road. You can almost see some of the mountains. After the bottom of Whistlepunk, there's another trail called Sexy Tree. It's really pretty dang good too, although I guess you could ride back up Gut Robber, which is green, if you wanted to ride down Whistlepunk again because it is a pretty cool trail. I mean, do what you want. You don't have to. It's just it's only 1,500 feet of climbing up to the top of Whistlepunk, so maybe you want to get some more climbing in. At the bottom of Sexy Tree, you'll come to a road that after a quarter mile or so connects to the top of Highballer, which you can't miss because there's this trail gnome guarding the entrance. Highballer starts out with a gradual downhill, then a gradual climb for maybe three quarters of a mile through thick stands of juvenile trees. It's tight and dark in here, and there are lots of gnomes in these woods. I don't trust those gnomes. Eventually, Highballer starts to drop elevation with some earnest, and it gets flowy and fun. One of the standout features of the trails I rode here are that they all have fantastic berms, and all the features are linked up exceptionally well. The builders here are clearly exceptional riders with a very good eye for how best to use the terrain. There are no annoying or dumb decisions in here, just well-built trail on well-armored, well-drained coast range clay under conifers. From the bottom of Highballer, I connected up with Springboard, which is a flowy green line all the way down to the parking lot. There's not much really to say about the bottom trails other than that they are, once again, expertly built and they ride as advertised. These lower trails provide an excellent place to teach your aspiring mountain biker friends how to ride on dirt. This place manages progression very well. I know it may seem ridiculous, but you can actually have a good day in the woods without any double black downhill near-death experiences. These are relaxed trails, which provide a nice contrast to the white knuckle experience of driving up here on interminable twisty single lane back roads. Here's what you should do if you're coming from the north. Drive to Alsea, ride here, then it's only like another two hours drive from here to Oak Ridge. You're welcome.
please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you're finding these videos helpful as you plan your next trip. Now, get out there and go ride your bike.